Well, we've had a couple of hard texts over the past couple of weeks, haven't we? And this is no different. This text about wealth and money, the difficulty of going into heaven. It's like a camel going through the eye of a needle. That's an image that's hard to get out of your mind when you think of that. I wonder, as we hear this text today, whatever happened to this faithful, God-fearing man? What happened to him after he left Jesus grieving? Did he go away grieving because he realized the sacrifice that Jesus was asking of him was just so far from what he ever imagined would be required? You see, he told Jesus, I've kept the commandments. I've done everything that the law has told me to do. I come to worship. I don't kill anybody. I don't steal anything. I don't defraud anyone. I don't gossip. I don't tell lies. I've kept the commandments, Jesus. Isn't that enough? And Jesus gives him one more thing. You lack one more thing. Why is it that the one more thing is always the hardest? <laughs> you know, I always felt that way in school. There's just one more thing you need to do. Oh, one more thing. Go sell and give all your money to the poor. One more thing. And the man goes away grieving. Is he grieving because of the sacrifice required? And potentially his inability to meet that expectation? Because that's just extreme. Or maybe he went away grieving because he realized that for his faithfulness to continue, Jesus was requiring a sacrifice, a transformation in his life. Maybe he was grieving because he realized that while he had been accumulating wealth and riches, there were those in the community and the society who were going without. And that if he wished to be a faithful follower of the good teacher, a transformation, a reorientation of his life was required. Oh, what a decision he had to make. How to live this faithful life that Jesus was calling to him. The disciples themselves are confused. What? Wait, Jesus, what? What? Tell me what's going on here. And so Jesus offers them some encouragement, and they eventually ask the question that's been asked over and over and over again throughout all the years. Well then, who then can be saved, Jesus? If we can't do this, if we can't do that, we can't do this, we can't do that, it's too hard, it's too hard, it's too hard, who then can be saved? And Jesus gives that piece of good news. With mortals, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You see, this text is not so much about the, the speaking against wealth and riches as much as it is about transforming our lives and reorienting, reorienting our lives as faithful followers of Jesus, using the generous gifts that God gives to us in ways that lift up the kingdom, in ways that support the advancement and the work of the good news in the world. That is what Jesus is asking of this rich man. And that's what Jesus asks of all of us, that our lives be transformed, reoriented to the kingdom's values and the values of the kingdom, of God's kingdom, is to care for the poor, to reach out to those who have nothing, to tend to the needs of others, of others. That's the essence of a transformed life, whether that be a homeless person who has no place to lay their head, or whether that be a neighbor who is grieving the loss of her husband and needs a casserole or a friend to come and knock on the door and say, do you need anything at the grocery store? You see, a transformed life is a life lived for the sake of others, for the sake of our neighbors, 
Our neighbors are sitting right beside us in the pew. Our neighbors live right next door. Our neighbors are those people that we meet in the grocery store and at the bank and out on the street and everywhere we go. Those are our neighbors. And so how do we transform our lives to care for them? That is Jesus' encouragement and requirement to us today as he answers the question. So I wonder, here in this season of, of stewardship, how is it that your life is being transformed? That your life is being reoriented to the kingdom? In a little while today, you're going to hear about the Estimates of Giving card. Yes, it's that time of the year. You're going to hear this estimate of giving card explained, and you'll be asked to ponder what it is and how you will contribute to the ministries of this congregation through your financial means. We need that. We need your financial giving, as you read in the letter that went out with the newsletter. We need that because it is through your giving of money, let's just name it, it is through your giving of money that we're able to keep the lights on, the air cool, the doors open, the, the toilet paper in the bathrooms and the paper towels and all those kinds of things. We need your financial giving. And at this time when you, when you contemplate, well, what can I give? What is within my means to give to support this church, the ministries that we're able to do? Ponder how it is that you can make that sacrifice, that giving, to continue to expand and extend the ministries here. For your financial giving helps us to do that. By filling out your estimate of giving card, you help us plan. You help us plan for ministry. And that's exciting to say, okay, you know, what can we do with the gifts that God is giving to us? How can we serve and live in the kingdom here called Palm Coast and Flagler County? But we need more than your money. We need you. We need you to decide and to be a part of our ministries so that you can participate in the work that we do. You see, we have many initiatives ahead of us. There are many things that we are about here in this place. We're, pon we're pondering ways to reach out more into the community. That's called outreach. To serve the needy and the poor, to reach out, out into our neighborhood, out beyond, maybe even around the world. You'll be hearing more in a couple of weeks about mosquito nets to help fight the disease of malaria in places where that's rampant. So outreach is an initiative. Maybe you'd like to be a part of that in some Maybe you'd like to be a part of a hospitality team that works hard to plan functions and be a part of our fellowship and our growth with each other because we like to have fun together. But when we have fun together, we need folks who can organize that, bring the drinks and bring the chips and be a part of that process. Maybe you'd like to be a part of that in some way. We're working to attract families and children Next Sunday at the, on the 21st at 11 o'clock, the sanctuary will be full because it's preschool welcome day. If you want to have fun, come to the 11 o'clock service um, and see our children in action and our parents. They'll be here next week. We have 70 children there. It's about 65 families who participate in our day school. They're all invited to worship. We have an opportunity a ministry opportunity that we can embrace and extend. Maybe you want to be a part of that in some way. How is it that you can use the gifts that God has given you to support the kingdom work that God calls us to do? It's going to be a sacrifice. There is no doubt about it. It's going to be a sacrifice of your time, of your energy, and of your finances. For in doing the things that God gives us to do, we're able to proclaim that with God, all things are possible. You see, we can sit around and say, well, we can't do that, we can't do that, we can't do that, we can't do that. Or we can say, with God, all things are possible. I think you should say that with me. 
With God, all things are possible. Let's do it again. With God, all things are possible. We believe that. We claim that. God is doing a mighty thing in this congregation. It's exciting to behold. And yet, he's calling us to reach out, stretch out, and do one more thing. Just one more thing. How will you participate in the one more thing? How will you participate in the ministries that God is calling us to do? If each one of us sitting, sitting here today, sitting here today, would choose to participate in one of those initiatives that I need, what a mighty thing it would be to gather ourselves, our time, and our offering together and to proclaim to this community, with God all things are possible. With God a church rises up from the ashes. With God a people come together to tend to the needs of others. With God we reach out around the world. With God's help and by God's power. We are transformed. How will you participate in the transformation that God is already doing right here, right now? For with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Do we believe it? Yes, we do. For with God, all things.